Cause Crab is a guy that thinks he's fly And is also known as a buster Always talking about what he wants And just sits on his broke ass So no, I don't want your number, no I don't wanna give you mine, no I don't wanna meet you nowhere, no I don't want none of your time, no I don't want no scrub A scrub is a guy that can get no love from me Hanging at the passenger side of his best friend's ride Trying to wild at me I don't want no scrub A scrub is a guy that can get no love from me Hanging at the passenger side of his best friend's ride Trying to holler at me No, 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 no No, 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 no No, 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 no Kind of weak, and I know that he cannot approach me. Cause I'm looking like glass, and he's looking like trash. Can't get with a deadbeat ass. So, no, I don't want. In this video, we're flying a uh, Tormentor. For our range control, we're going to be using a one man afterburner, a scram, and a web. And this is going to help us to uh, keep out at our beam range because we're using some small focused beam laser tubes. Uh, mostly, we're going to be using some multi frequency with that. And the idea is we're going to try and keep our opponent out to uh, about 8K if we can and just hit them with multi from there. For our tank, uh, we're going to bump our resistances up in armor and. Uh, in the case of the damage control hull, by using that if a compact damage control and the refuge adaptive nanoplating. And uh, we're going to use an ansil to get some rep off there, and we're going to strengthen the uh, total amount of rep on that ansil by adding two small auxiliary nano pump twos. We're also going to boost our damage a little bit by using a heat sink and a collision accelerator. In this clip, we're engaging a breacher. Our biggest worry is that if this is a dual tank breacher with two EM and one thermal rig, then it might be able to tank long enough to actually whittle us down. I spent time on the before I you. These days, something like a dream since I've been on the road. Seeing shit I've never seen before, and still there's no place to come. Spending all my days on the west side. 
With us having similar speeds with him going a little bit faster here for the majority, his auto orbit's actually going to be able to mitigate a little bit of damage, so I start manual piloting in the same direction he's going so that I can hit harder. Here we can see that his primary mistake was using uh, Nova Rage. He lost out on about 30 DPS, uh, where he could be using Kaldari Navy Nova. Here we see a Tristan that slides on our Plex, and we immediately approach him. Just in case it's a kiting Tristan, we don't want it to be able to kite us out. But as soon as we see that he actually has a high slot, he has that uh, NOS there, as well as a scram web. We know that he's not trying to kite, so we pull our range, just in case it is a new Tristan. Interestingly, we don't see the nukes, and we just see that uh, single energy NOS Ratu, which means that he's either blaster or rail fit, and based off of the range that he's pretty keen on keeping, he has some rails. This is a really cool fit that a lot of people probably don't expect, and with proper range control and piloting, I think it could work really, really well. But this fight just came down to raw apply DPS. In this fight, we're engaging a Rifter, and we can see from this very first little bit of damage we take that it is already based off of how much it actually chunks away from our shields. So this should be interesting. Interestingly, this pilot decides that uh, he doesn't need to move at all and just stays at zero meters per second until he decides it's time to try and leave and starts landing towards the station. Around here, the target either decided to decycle his guns or he just burnt them out. Even if he had been able to keep the damage on though, I'm not very confident that he would have been able to bring us down with his uh, lack of attempt at range control. We likely weren't in his optimal. Fit itself is actually pretty good, but I can't really see working out against a Tormentor that can apply at range as well as we do. In this fight, we end up engaging a dual web nuding meme condor that uh, is really interesting. The dual webs kind of just allow him to stay under our guns here as well as allowing him to apply really well with Rage Rockets, which is kinda cool. At this point, we're completely nuded out. And uh, we can't run our tank, our rep, we can't run anything. We're not actually scrammed, but we end up sticking around to feed him anyway. He deserves the kill. Good fight, dude. This is a really interesting meme fit that I doubt really anyone expects him to be using. It's definitely something I'm looking to play with a little bit. He's got the dual tank, dual web, he can use the Nova, he's got a nuke. It just got so much utility and effectiveness. Here we're engaging a Merlin. Seeing as how they can actually hit pretty hard with the blasters, if it's blaster fit, we want to pull off as quickly as possible. As soon as we see that medium ancillary shield booster cycle, we immediately know that it's not going to have enough slots to uh, have dual web. So it's not going to have range control on us, and since it's not applying at the range it's at right now, we know that it's blaster fit. So really this fight comes down to uh, chilling at range and trying to work through their tank a little bit. Right here they find their null ammo, but it's going to be way too little, way too late. Good fight my dude. This fit actually looks like it could do pretty well against other brawlers if things are trying to brawl at blaster range, however, if something's trying to scram kite it, there's nothing it's going to be able to do. 
I initially was not going to engage. This hookbill, as you can see, I'm piloting away from him, seeing if he's going to be micro fit or how he's fit. But as soon as I see that ECM, I immediately know that he is not going to be well fit or well piloted. So I decided to go all in and see how I could do. Pay really close attention here, as you're going to see his tank is uh, really just melting and it increases by a little bit every so often, which kind of tells us that he has a small shield booster on his hook build. So here we have a pretty clear instance of somebody with more money than sense, as they have no range control, really no damage, very little thought behind the fit. And at the end of the day, those uh, high grade crystals are only giving him an extra 34 rep per second. Don't fit small shield boosters, kids. Not even once. In this clip, we're engaging another Tormentor. Oftentimes, these mirror matchups will come down to uh, who has the best fit, because the application is going to be about the same on both ends. The main difference between our fits is that instead of a second AUGS Nano Pump 1, he's using a small transverse bulkhead 2. And what's going to happen there is the small transverse bulkhead will give him an extra 290 hull tank, where if I'm allowed to cycle every cycle of my ENSIL, I get an extra 330 HP from having that AUGS Nano Pump. This engagement, we're chasing around what we think is a kiting Tristan. We want to try and land as close as possible to him and try and get a nice scram web on him before he can pull range. But uh, he doesn't seem to want to let that happen. We end up landing right on top of him. And we managed to secure Scram Web. We don't see any Newts, Scram, or Web from him, but we end up seeing that Warp Disruptor, and that really just kind of tells us that it is, in fact, the Kiting Tristan, and since we've caught him, we've got nothing to worry about. We do see Jimmy and Local, and we see an Atron come on to scan. So we decided to stick around, see if this dude tries to land on us. And the Atron starts to land. It's important to note that we're starting at a bit of a disadvantage here. We only have five Ansil uh, charges left, and we are, our guns already have a little bit of heat, as well as some things in our mid-rack. Being that his Atron's going to be a little bit faster than us, he'll be able to get under our guns, and it looks like he's blasted a bit. So we decided to start 
manual piloting so we can track a little bit better and finish them off. So we're going to end off with a couple of notes here. First off, you're going to set your keep it range to about 7.5k and uh, use that. And use some multi-frequency. Multi-frequency should touch out to about 8 kilometers or so. So you should be well within your application range. Next off, if your target starts to pull in on you and uh, mitigate some of that damage by orbiting you, whether it's a manual pilot or not, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at their ship, pilot in the same direction as them, load gleam, and you'll be able to apply to them a lot better that way. You're also going to want to avoid being nuded. I would avoid any ship with newts that has range control over you, like say a Kruer or something like that, or any ship that has bonuses to newt rangers, something like Sentinels or uh, say a Dragoon. Finally, you're going to want to watch your cap usage. Even if you're not being nuded, you might cap yourself out just by running your ANSIL, your guns, and everything else at the same time. So keep an eye on that, and if necessary, uh, find modules to turn off to conserve a little bit. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to fly dangerously.